Will real estate prices come down? Will interest rates come down? I'm Brett Jennings with Real Estate Experts, and we're going to talk about this and more in our summer market update. So what's happening with the real estate market this summer? To answer that question, we're going to take a little bit different perspective and first understand what makes up the market. Well, first of all, it's made up of buyers and sellers, but more importantly, the psychology of buyers and sellers. In fact, it was John Maynard Keynes, a British economist from the 1930s, who first said markets are nothing other than waves of optimism and pessimism. And nothing more true could be said about today's real estate market. And the big anchor point for buyers in the last year and a half has been the fact that interest rates have more than doubled over the course of the last year and a half. And this really put buyers and sellers on an emotional journey. In fact, this has kind of been the emotional spectrum for buyers in the last 12 to 18 months. They first started out really kind of angry and upset about the fact that rates were rising uh, and then going to states of dismay, despair. And I think it's best summarized by taking a look at this something called the five stages of grief. Now, you would think we would be using a framework like this more when we're consulting and therapy, but nothing could be truer than what the emotional experience has been for buyers and sellers over the last 18 months. First, there was this period of denial, thinking, well, rates are going to come down again. And then in uh, the second quarter of last year, when rates weren't coming down, people were outright mad. I missed my chance at the market. And about the middle of the year, bargaining started to happen. We started to see sellers whose properties were on the market for an extended period of time starting to offer incentives like interest rate buy downs to help these buyers with high interest rates get a discount on their mortgage to bring the monthly payment down. While at the same time, you had buyers sitting on the sidelines who had got knocked out of the market because payments were just unaffordable, really getting depressed. But here's where we are today. We're on the far right side of this graph in this place of acceptance, which has really helped us arrive in what I would call the new normal for the market. And here's a few things about the new normal. The good news is the market is normalizing. After a major contraction in both supply and demand, Buyers are back as they've reached this place of acceptance, understanding that interest rates are not going to change anytime soon. And for that same reason, with buyers coming back into the market, prices have recovered. After the second half of 2022, we did see prices come down as interest rates peaked, but prices now have recovered. The reality check, however, is that home buyers do have limited options because there are fewer sellers, and that's created a scenario where we have low inventory. Uh, this low supply, however, is coupled with low demand. The affordability has pushed uh, half the sellers have left the market, half the buyers have left the market, but we still have a balanced market keeping things relatively stable. The outlook going forward, however, is entry level new construction is providing options for those entry level buyers. So overall this summer, we can expect to be, see a moderately active summer season. Now let's take a deeper look into what's behind uh, these, this information and data. This new normal that we're achieving is really buyers and sellers coming to terms that these interest rates now are going to be between 6 and 7% for the foreseeable future. In fact, if we look back over the last 30 years, that actually has been the average uh, over the last 30 years for interest rates. We just got spoiled by being in a period of time with artificially low interest rates. But what, we'll, what we're seeing now is that buyers have acclimated or accepted uh, that rates are kind of here to stay. That um, has helping more sellers come to the market. They realize that, okay, if we're going to make a move, it doesn't look like anything's changing. So supply has come back a little bit, but it does remain limited by the fact that it is still expensive uh, for many people to make a move. Um, now, Here's an interesting quote by Tom Barkin, the president of Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond. He said, I didn't fully anticipate how much the move in interest rates would convince people not to put their houses on the market. So why are we seeing 50% fewer sellers in the market today than in the past? Well, imagine this. If you purchased a home in the last few years and you had a low interest rate, or even if you refinanced, then maybe this is your situation. If you have an interest rate of 3% or so and you want, you found the perfect house tomorrow, that's just a little bit bigger or maybe in a better location than where you are. If that house is even close to the same price of your home, 
the idea of moving from your 3% mortgage into a monthly payment that's almost twice or more is probably something that would give you pause. And that's certainly what's kept buyers, I'm sorry, sellers uh, on the sidelines. And for this reason, when we look at inventory uh, on the historical perspective, this is what is the story today. This is looking back all the way to 2011, looking back 12 years, and you can see the overall pattern is that inventory has been on the decline. However, if you look to the very far right of the graph here, you can see that in the last couple of months, now that acceptance is here and buyers are uh, realizing this is the new normal, we are seeing some sellers come to the market as well as buyer activity picking up. Uh, active listings, the number of active listings for sale uh, is increased as well. This is going back five years to 2017, but we see a similar pattern uh, in that in the last several years, inventory has trended down and it trended down all the way uh, at the beginning of this year, but our spring, late spring and early summer are starting to see uh, some, some additional sellers putting their homes on the market. What's keeping the market balanced, however, is the fact that buyer demand uh, has come back. Uh, mortgage rates do heavily influence the direction of home sales, but this relatively steady rates that we've had for the last six months, somewhere between six and a quarter and 7%, have led to several consist consecutive months of consistent home sales. That's by Lawrence Yoon, chief economist of the National uh, Association of Realtors. And that, that his quote here shows up in the graph that we see at the right. Uh, this is going back all the way back to 2014, looking at home sales. Uh, they'd increased the 2021, coming out of COVID was really our boom years. But you can see on the far right side of the graph, as interest rates really ratcheted up in 2022, the number of home sales ratcheted down and was continuing to decrease month over month just until the month of May. So May was our turnaround month and we're starting to see uh, home sales stabilize there. Um, here's an interesting thing, a fact though, when we take a look at what's happening with the psychology of buyers, there was a survey, market survey done recently by Freddie Mac and they asked uh, home buyers um, and, and homeowners if they were likely to buy or sell. And 18% of people said that they were likely to buy a home in the next six months. And as many as 16% of home owners said they might be likely to sell in the next six months. Now those numbers in and of themselves uh, might not mean much to you, but we take it against the backdrop of what these numbers normally are we usually see 10% of consumers considering buying or selling in a normal market. And with current surveys showing 16 to 18% of people wanting to buy or wanting to sell in the next six months, what we can conclude is that we have pent up demand. People have been on the sidelines, either waiting for rates to come down or feeling that things are too expensive. So our forecast is that we see, as soon as we see rates come down by any significant margin, we will see a surge in the market again in buying and selling. Now, the fact that we've had low inventory has helped our prices. Uh, when we look at what's been happening with, we're gonna look at two things here, list price and sales price. The graph we're looking at here is Bay Area list prices, specifically Santa Clara County, uh, going back all the way to 2020. You can see we had a nice uptick in surge in prices all through 2021. Uh, in 2022, when those interest rates peaked, prices drifted down a little bit, but list price is on the rise again. When we look at sales price, and the way we measure this is price per square foot, uh, we are seeing that, again, you see the same pattern that when interest rates went up uh, significantly in 2022, prices per square foot came down, but the same pattern we see in list price is showing up in sales price, and that is prices are rising again. So what's been happening with mortgage rates? Well, we all know that they nearly they doubled in the course of 2022. Uh, they did pull back in January of 2023, and that's what gave us, brought some buyers back into the market. But overall, uh, rates have been high. That's what you see on the blue graph there. But the orange here on the right side of the graph is where we forecast or where the analysts are saying rates are likely to hit. We're close to 7% on rates now, but in Q3, we do anticipate rates to drift down a little bit and a little bit more in Q4. 
Uh, and then by the, the same time next year, we may be seeing rates in the range of five and a half percent. Here's uh, mortgage rate projections from several of the major mortgage analyst firms, Fannie Mae, uh, the Mortgage Bankers Association, and the National Association of Realtors. And we see the same pattern, same story told in numbers as opposed to a graph that we should likely see a nice slow drift of interest rates coming down a bit throughout the next 12 months. Now, here's our forecast for the summer. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Where are we going? Well, here's what we can say. Rates will likely drift down as inflation comes down. Um, that's what we're seeing in this interest rate forecast. Demand will be steady for a couple reasons. We have low supply overall, and the job market in the Bay Area and technology is still growing. Supply, however, will stay low uh, as fewer sellers are listing their homes. And for that reason, steady demand and low supply, we will likely see prices continue to rise gradually, however, as demand exceeds supply. Now, I want to wrap this up by summarizing with the most frequent question we're getting. And that is, if we've been thinking about moving or we would like to move up or uh, move out of the area, whatever it might be, or maybe buy in the area, should we wait for rates to come down before we buy? And in order to answer that question, I want to tell you what happens first. When rates go down, what experience tells us, what the market tells us, because we've been here before. When interest rates go down, demand will increase because all these buyers that have been sitting on the sidelines jump back in. As that happen, as that happens, supply, the available number of homes for sale, decreases with this buyer competition. All these buyers are coming back into the market to snap up the available homes. Because of that, prices rise. As demand exceeds supply, buyers compete and buyers will face multiple offers. So to answer the question, should we wait to buy and we wait until interest rates come down to make a move, I want to ask you a question. And that is, would it be easier to, one, purchase now when there's more selection, less competition, and simply refinance to a loan with a lower interest rate when rates go down? So you're in the new home and then refinance when rates go down? Or would it be easier to wait for rates to come down and then get in the market when all the buyers are back, inventory is low, competition is fierce, and prices are rising. I think the answer is pretty simple. Um, our expert advice is that buy before the frenzy starts. In fact, because the market is not at a fever pitch, uh, and if we find a property that's been on the market for some period of time, we might be able to negotiate with the seller to do something called an interest rate buy down to be able to get your mortgage down to a more manageable number. And then simply refinance uh, when interest rates come down. It's a, it's a lot easier to buy before the frenzy and then refinance when rates come down. So I wanna thank you for tuning in for our summer market update. Uh, this is Brett Jennings. And if you have additional questions about the market or about your personal situation, uh, I invite you to get back to the person who shared this video with you. Until we talk again, this is Brett Jennings saying we'll be right here, ready to help you create a better life through real estate. Have a great one.